Hey, Magic fans. Welcome back. This is the Captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We're on the road. I'm in the hotel. And this is probably going to be some shitty audio. Uh, man, this has been a challenge. So, but without further ado, don't forget, uh, we're still in there. So, comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We're going to look at a couple of Ixalan spoilers that we got while I'm on the road uh, on this beautiful Sunday. So, uh, links in the description to the eBay store, um, all that good job. Uh, TCG player, Patreon's in there. Man, my script's not here. I'm really off the cuff today. Um, yeah. So, without further ado, I guess, we will get into it. So, We've only got a couple. We're going to start today off with, oh, don't forget we're on Rumble and we're on uh, YouTube. Like and subscribe on both to help support the channel completely free. Anyway, so first we have a what they call the guest appearance card, which is one of the special reprint cards in the set. <clears throat> it's an artifact. It is Coat of Arms. So we haven't had a Coat of Arms reprint in a while. Uh, this card does have a decent amount of value to it. It's highly played. It's a five cost artifact. Is this, that says each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. For example, if two goblin warriors and a goblin shaman are on the battlefield, each one gets plus two, plus two, because they're all goblins. <coughs> Excuse me. So, for example, if there were two goblins, every goblin would get plus one, plus one, because it doesn't count itself, it just counts every other creature type. Uh, this is very big in Commander. Uh, obviously because it is probably one of the best, uh, effects to pump creatures. Can we say Crusade? Is it far enough in the video yet? Am I going to get banned? Anyway, one of the best Crusade effects that there is for Commander and very popular. I gotta admit, this full art of this one too is also very pretty. Um, I do like the old art as well, but it hasn't had a lot of reprintings. Uh, so this one, I think I'm kind of okay with. Now, with that being said, though, let's get back into the actual set and look at some, uh, spoilers from the set itself. We have, uh, whew, these names, I tell you, uh, Nikanzel, Current Conductor, whew, boy. So for a blue and a green, you get a 2-3, already a decent raid, I guess, um, Whenever a creature you control explores a land card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. That is incredible. Um, also, whenever a creature you control explores a non-land card, put a plus one, plus one counter on the current conductor. Okay, so let's get this right. So this is a card without explore that sits on the battlefield and lets you put a land into play for free. Or, it gets a plus one, plus one, along with the creature that explores. Um, and blue-green has most of the explore stuff uh, from the older set and the newer set. Uh, it looks like they're really getting into this kind of explore mechanic, uh, which may be pretty cool for a commander deck if enough cards come out. Um, but with that being said, too, you could do a merfolk or maybe explore slash uh, elemental deck where all of these things come into play and give you some kind of bonus if you don't have enough cards just for merfolk um i like this card a lot i think it's a great uncommon uh it may have some legs in standard uh just because uh if everything has the ability to explore the ability to to mana ramp yourself plus make this thing big is a big deal now it is legendary you can't play more than one that may be one thing that holds it back but being legendary and small, it probably will be killed rather easily, which means having four in your deck won't be that big of a deal. Because if I was you, the last thing I would do is leave this thing on the battlefield to let it run its shenanigans wild. Um, this could easily be part of a merfolk deck in standard, where uh, it kind of uses this style of explore to mana ramp itself with lands onto the battlefield to make big nappies to destroy the opponent. All right. Moving on, next we have the Blood Thorn Flail. That's uh, interesting. Must be a vampire weapon. Anyway, one black equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. Uh, to equip, you pay three colorless or discard a card. Um, not really a fan. 
myself. I mean, at best, this is probably a limited card. I could I could see though where in limited or in standard where this would be usable. We do know there's a lot of graveyard shenanigans in this set. Plus, being able to craft things and exile cards out of your graveyard means things have to be in your graveyard. So this may be one of those equipments where you purposely play to uh, discard a card on purpose. Uh, and you can also use this as a crafting fodder card um, along with other creatures in your deck that you may want to equip it to if you really have to. It's got some possibilities. Um, I don't think they're going to be big and probably won't see much play, but there is a possibility this could be a thing, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. All right, next, moving on, we have the Dusk Rose Reliquary. So this is very interesting. It's a one white artifact. An additional cost to cast this spell, you have to sacrifice an artifact or a creature. It has Ward 2, which is kind of cool. When it enters the battlefield, exile target artifact or creature and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. Um, it's going to be good and limited because it does deal with something on the battlefield. However, because it gets to come back, not the best. And also, you have to sacrifice an artifact or a creature to it. Now, that being said, that again could be all part of the plan because putting an artifact into your graveyard uh, means you can still craft with it. So you don't really lose anything. Um, plus, it does have War 2. It is a 1 white. So if you make a token on turn 1 or something... You could easily play this to exile anything you want. Um, it might be as close as we're going to get to a new form of Swords to Plowshares that is cheap, unconditional, uh, and gets almost anything. It doesn't get, uh, you know, enchantments and planeswalkers, what have you, but it does get artifacts and creatures, which are going to be big in the set. So limited, probably good enough. Uh, but for standard, we're going to have to wait and see how the decks line out to see if this is the removal spell of choice. Because, to be honest, there's a lot better removal spells than this. But, if you're strapped for cash, uh, this might be the one to go with. Alright, moving on. Next we have... Rampaging Ceratops. So, red and four for this four. It's five four, excuse me. Can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a limited all-star. But, that's the only place it's going to probably see play. Five mana is way too much for a five four that doesn't really do anything other than can't be blocked. Um, but it will be able to sew up uh, some damage and maybe end games in limited if it can't be dealt with. Because having three more creatures on the battlefield you want to give up to kill one creature is normally not an option. Unless you have to. So this may be a good red removal spell uh, in the right situations where the opponent has to block it. But we'll have to wait and see. But again, I still think this is probably at best a limited card. All right, moving on. Next we have Belligerent Yearling. This is interesting. Red and one for a 3-2 Trampler. That is an amazing rate for this card. Uh, two mana for a 3-2 Trampler is already good. Uh, whenever <clears throat> another dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Belligerent Yearling's base power become equal to that creature's power till end of turn. All right, so this is really good. Um... Especially in a dinosaur deck, like, you know, if you make that your Ceratops for 5, and this thing becomes a 5-2, yes, it's going to be blocked, yes, it's going to die, but it's got Trample, it's going to get damage across. Uh, and that's really what matters in the late game when you play this early, and then all of a sudden you can't swing with it. Uh, with that being said, I was really scared there for a minute. This is going to be kind of like the Eldrazi card, that whenever you lay an Eldrazi, it just becomes power and toughness of whatever it is. That would have been broken as all hell. Um... But thankfully it's not. But still, I think this is a great card. This is going to see play in red decks and dinosaur decks. It's cheap. It's powerful. In late game, it can become very strong and really swing in for some serious damage uh, with the ability to steal another dinosaur's power. So, yeah, this I think this is going to be an all-star in standard, in limited. Uh, and if you're playing commander and you're playing dinosaurs, hell, you might as well play this too. At least it's an early drop. All right, moving on. Next we have Magmatic Galleon. So two red and three for a 5-5 vehicle. When it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to our creature and opponent controls. So already it's a five mana removal spell, which makes it playable. 
Whenever one or more creatures your opponent controls are dealt excess non-combat damage, create a treasure token. So you could get a rebate if you kill something smaller than 5 on the toughness. Cruise for 2, attacks for 5. Um, now, mind you, if you have other red spells in your deck that deal damage, you can generate treasures with them as well. Um, I think this is going to see a lot of play in, uh, in limited, definitely. Probably standard as well. 5 damage to target creature and opponent controls is nothing to laugh at. Uh, especially when it comes with a 5-5 five, five beater body. Um, that you can crew into later. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, five mana to deal five damage to kill a creature is fine with nothing attached to it, especially limited. But later, this can become a five five. It's going to swing in um, if you have a bunch of smaller creatures. So you can run small creatures with this, use this as your big creature and removal at the same time. So uh, this has lots of promise. Uh, definitely, I think this will be a limited all star because of what it does, how it does. Um, and the fact that it's still a presence on the board after the removal fact and can get you treasures. Uh, in standard, it may be just good enough for the exact same reasons, uh, depending how the red decks go. Or, I mean, let's be honest, if you're playing a, a red-green dinosaur deck, this is not the worst thing you could be doing. Um, it's actually pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, but that's just me, because that 3-2 dinosaur for two that won't be able to get in... Yeah, this ain't a dinosaur, but it does become a 5-5, five five, which can take its place, and it can get crewed very easily by that two by that two drop. So I think this will be a good card. Probably gonna see at least a little bit of play in standard, a lot in limited, because yeah, it does all the things. Uh, and that may be about as far as it goes. Probably not good enough for commander because it just doesn't do enough. But I could definitely see it get played, maybe in a dinosaur deck. Who knows? So with that said, guys, we have come to the end. Like I said, we only had a couple of cards to spoil today. Uh, thanks for putting up with the poor video quality, and God knows what else is going on because I'm trying to do this on a laptop. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, I'm out and about getting ready to go have breakfast and do my work thing. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check us out on Rumble. So until the until next time, guys, be kind, and as always, I hope to see you across from the game table. Holy cow, this sucks. I really miss my home rig. Wow.